arsenic and potassium, which are prevalent in earth rocks, are practically non-existent in NASA's moon rocks. An exception, of course, are the highly unusual creep rocks. Potassium oxide is listed, and although the Apollo sample and the meteorite have very little potassium in them, less than 1%, the Apollo sample 10057 that Mason and Melson compared has more. However, the lunar samples in Korotev's graph also contain only a few hundredths of 1% by weight for potassium, just like eucrites. As for arsenic, although not mentioning them here, later on in the book, between pages 117 and 119, the authors make a list of all the trace elements found in Apollo rocks, terrestrial basalts, eucrites, and chondrites, and make a comparative list. Sorry, no howardites are listed, so this will have to do. The respective arsenic contents for Apollo rocks and eucrites are exactly identical, 0 0.05 parts per million. This places eucrites in exactly the same place as the lunar samples on Korotev's graph. Although terrestrial basalts and chondrites have significantly more arsenic, it's fair to say that arsenic is virtually non-existent in all classes of rock. And why would Webb claim that creep rocks, rocks with abundances of potassium, K, rare earth elements, REE, -E, and phosphorus, P, are highly unusual when his own slide indicated that the majority of Apollo 14 samples are creep rocks. And let's not forget how well the Apollo 12 creep rock matched up in comparison to tektites. Thorium and samarium, which are totally absent in chondrites, are more common to earth rocks and to a lesser degree in NASA's moon rocks. Let's see about that. Thorium is virtually, not totally, absent in chondrites, 0 0.04 parts per million. Apollo rocks and finds respectively have thorium contents of 2 parts per million and 6 parts per million, whereas terrestrial basalts have 2.4 ppm. Eucrites have nearly 4 times less with only 0.4 parts per million. As for samarium, 15 parts per million for Apollo samples 4 parts per million for terrestrial rocks, 2.3 parts per million for eucrites, and 0.13 parts per million for chondrites. This lands eucrites mingling among various examples of lunar rocks on Korotev's diagram. The terrestrial basalts that Mason and Melson list also seem to have similar ratios of thorium and samarium. Due to these similarities in chemical composition, Mason and Melson suspected that these meteorites may be in fact of lunar origin. On page 111, they write, The chemical, mineralogical, and textural similarities between the Moore County meteorites and some of the lunar rocks probably indicate a similar origin. But guess what? Neither the Moore County Eucrite nor the Capita Howardite were ever identified as lunar meteorites. Later in his video, Webb uses the Meteoritical Society's webpage to look up meteorites. If we use that same source, we find that neither of these rocks are classed as lunar meteorites. They are classed as eucrites and howardites respectively. And don't forget the oxygen isotope ratios that are the same for moon rocks and earth rocks and different in meteorites. We already discussed this. Some chondrites do have similar oxygen isotope ratios to the Apollo samples. Some don't. And as demonstrated by DAG-872, although generally having slightly less oxygen-18 than Apollo samples, HED meteorites can closely resemble the Apollo samples in regard to oxygen isotope ratios. So where do eucrites and howardites fit on this list? If we go back to the Meteoritical Society's webpage and look up their definition of eucrites, we learn... The eucrites are strongly linked with the diogenites and howardites. The three groups are collectively known as HED meteorites and may come from asteroid 4 Vesta. And for howardites... Howardites are an abundant group of polymic breccia achondrites that appear to represent mixtures of eucrites and diogenites. These three linked groups are collectively known as HED meteorites and may come from asteroid 4 Vesta.
Hmm, HED meteorites. Why does that sound so familiar? Actually, even if we discount DAG-872, the oxygen isotopes in the Apollo samples do not differ by much for HED meteorites. This chart we looked at earlier indicates that at lowest, moon rocks have an oxygen 18 to oxygen 17 ratio of 4.2 to 2.2 per mil. This is consistent with such HED meteorites as the Melrose Howardite and the Kachari 1 Eucrite. Incidentally, although the HED group is not officially recognised as lunar meteorites, it is believed by some scientists that they played a part in the Moon's origin. To account for the similarities in chemical composition and mineralogy between HED meteorites and Apollo samples, some have proposed that the Mars-sized planet which allegedly struck the Earth was identical in composition and mineralogy to the HED meteorites. This was discussed by Alex Ruzicka, Gregory Snyder and Larry Taylor in a 2002 paper. The central theses of our work are that the composition of the Moon is not unique in the solar system, that it resembles the composition of the parent body of HED meteorites, likely the asteroid 4 Vesta, to a remarkable extent, and that geochemical data do not support an origin of the Moon by rotational fission or small impact collisional ejection. Furthermore, the data are consistent with a giant impact origin for the Moon, only if the Moon largely inherited the composition of the impactor. Oh, and the glass spherules? In an Astronomy Today article, we find... Apollo 11 was expected to find vast quantities of tektites on the Moon, yet did not. However, when we used the electron microprobe on the small volcanic spherules which make up the regolith of the Moon, we found them to be identical to the composition of tektites. For proof of such, here's a comparison of the average weight percentages of the major elements found in the average lunar highland soil, glasses from Apollos 11 and 14, and tektites from a diversity of countries. As you can see, other than magnesium oxide and calcium oxide, the concentrations of major elements are vastly similar between tektites and glasses found in Apollo 11 and Apollo 14 samples. Returning briefly to the subject of water in the Apollo samples, it could also be pointed out that tektites typically have water contents of about 0.005% by weight, or 50 parts per million. This is exactly the same amount of water that Alberto Sal and company had detected in the Apollo 15 spherules back in 2008. Webb loves to allege that his opponents compare apples to oranges. Yet, he evidently doesn't mind doing it himself. Comparing Apollo samples to chondrites while simultaneously ignoring all other types of meteorites and then implying that none of the regular meteorites are similar to the Apollo samples is a fallacy of omission and straw man all rolled into one. Actually, this entire comparison by Phil Webb contains at least four logical fallacies. Fallacy number one, cherry picking the one class of meteorite that is most favourable to your claims. Fallacy number two, applying the characteristics of one class of meteorite to meteorites in general. Fallacy number three, ignoring all other types of meteorites that do have vast similarities. And we already discussed his comparing apples to oranges. I'm sure the fallacies police would have a field day with this guy. Speaking of which... Essentially, William Hartman has confirmed my earlier theory. That NASA used meteorite samples from one random origin or another, made a few alterations, and then claimed they picked it up from the moon. They made the fatal error by expecting that no one would actually send a probe to the moon to verify the lunar geology. And Jera made a fatal error expecting that no one would actually listen to what Dr. Hartman really said. Meteorites from Mars, meteorites from the inner asteroid belt, and meteorites from the outer asteroid belt all have different oxygen isotope ratios. Hartman said that NASA's moon rocks have oxygen isotope ratios common to Earth rocks, not meteorites. So there is absolutely no way any of NASA's moon rocks could be meteorites that were collected on Earth. This is more quote mining and omitting by Phil Webb.
Here is the section he showed in full. Interestingly, on page 259 of his book, A Traveller's Guide to Mars, written three years before Smart One's impact, William Hartman had this to say about lunar meteorites. A similar number of meteorites have been proven to come from the moon, an identification that would not have been possible without the rock samples returned earlier by Apollo astronauts. Rock samples that we now know are different to the ones actually on the moon. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Essentially, William Hartman has confirmed my earlier theory that NASA used meteorite samples from one random origin or another, made a few alterations, and then claimed they picked it up from the moon. They made the fatal error by expecting that no one would actually send a probe to the moon to verify the lunar geology. Gee, Webb, how many fallacies of omission and contextomy is that you've made? And I've already proved you wrong regarding the oxygen isotopes. If anything, the meteorites from other parts of the solar system with oxygen isotope ratios different to those of Earth, which Hartman was referring to, were probably the chondrites like NWA801, not the HED meteorites, which, as demonstrated by GAD872, can have oxygen isotope ratios identical to Apollo samples. In fact, Taking into consideration the terrestrial contamination that the University of Arizona applies to GAD-872's distinctly lunar oxygen isotope ratio, not to mention the overwhelming similarities between Apollo samples and HED meteorites that Mason and Melson noticed, I am now confident in saying that the majority of meteorites officially classed as lunar samples the ones that were identified as being of lunar origin through comparison with the Apollo samples are nothing more than eucrites and howardites, like GAD-872. Further evidence for this can be found in the story of Antarctic meteorite Elephant Maureen 87521, or EET-87521 for short. When it was discovered in 1987, Brian Mason and Carol Schwartz identified it as a eucrite, based on its mineralogy. The Lunar Sample Compendium also reveals that EET 87521 has a chemistry that can be matched fairly closely to that of the Moore County eucrite. But three years after its discovery, it was declared a lunar meteorite by Jeremy Delaney, Paul Warren, and Robert Clayton when the oxygen isotopes turned out to be akin to those of the Apollo samples. Ironically enough, even meteorite dealers have noticed these similarities. This eucrite, currently being sold piece by piece for a hefty price, carries this product description. Yes, this eucrite really does look like the lunar meteorite NWA482. This is an unusual eucrite since it resembles to the NWA482 lunar meteorite almost exactly. When I acquired this nicely oriented fresh achondrite, I thought this might be a lunar meteorite, but it turned out to be an unusual eucrite. You can clearly see many tiny black shock veins all over the white matrix. When I first heard of this meteorite, its classification was still pending, and it was simply dubbed NWA quadruple XA. It has now since been officially recognized as NWA 6072.